the same thing in the second half. We'll be back in just a moment for more action from Memorial Stadium and take a look at the University of Texas marching band right after we take this break on HSE. BYU. It's another big Sunday of sports action coming up tomorrow on HSE. joined by some outstanding Central Texas high school talent and together they will perform a selection from a musical classic the music man 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 cornets close at hand they were followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuoso the cream of every band The show band of the Southwest, the Longhorn Band, 340 strong. BYU with a halftime lead, 14 to 10. Ed Biles and I will be back with the first half statistics right after this break on HSE. Theme show on the field at Memorial Stadium.
Tom and I return with halftime highlights and stats. You know, as I said earlier at halftime, injuries have devastated the Texas Longhorns. On Thursday, Texas linebacker Lee Beckelman announced he was giving up college football because of a serious neck injury he sustained last Saturday against Houston. He has excelled on the football field and in the classroom. Today, Lee is one of our classroom champions. And enjoy the Texas Longhorn marching band under the director, Glenn Richter.
alumni band, the largest of its kind in the nation, with a blast from the past. We'll be back with the first half statistics and much, much more from Austin, Texas, right here on HSE. Houston. the game, Ed Biles had a chance to chat with the personable head coach down on the field. We're here at halftime with Corky Nelson, head coach of the University Band. So let's go down to the field. back with a start of the second half. A quick look at the stats prior to the kickoff of the second half from Memorial Stadium in Austin, where the halftime score shows the North Texas Eagles leading the Texas Longhorns 14 to 7 on HSE. University of Texas marching day. As you take a look at the halftime score, and right now, let's take time out for this message from the University of Texas at Texas Tech University.
University of Texas. And right now, it's time for this week's Classroom Champion. Longhorns leading by three. And as usual, as a part of our halftime, the color and pageantry of college football at the Southwest Conference. Let's go to the field and take a look at the show band of the Southwest, the University of Texas marching band. Messages from the University of Texas and Texas Christian University. Tuning up for presidents is nothing new for UT. Hook'em Horns has echoed through a bunch of inaugural parades for governors and presidents. The orange and white marches as the show band of the Southwest, and on Friday will march as the lead band in President Bush's parade. <laughs> Rudely awakened after an all-night flight and still dressed in ties and heels, 320 members of the University of Texas Longhorn Band ambled on to the football stadium at Robert E. Lee High School in Springfield, Virginia, and tuned up for rehearsal, surprised by all the sunshine. Well, it was supposed to be colder than this, though. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of surprised it's like Texas. Were well, you snowing. disappointed? Yeah. It's yeah. snowing, yeah. We're, we're, we're supposed to be snowing, snowing, and it's not snowing. We're upset. Da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> Da-da-da-da-da. This is Old Hat and historic for band director Glenn Richter. This is his second presidential inaugural parade and UT's fourth march in front of the White House. First was in 1960 for JFK's inaugural, uh, LBJ in 64, uh, Ronald Reagan in 81, and now back for George Bush in 89. And UT will again serenade the president with a special song scored just for this very occasion back in 1964. John Edmonds wrote a piece called March LBJ. The song is called the March of the Longhorns these days because UT's band director was angry President Johnson stiffed the band for a White House invitation after the inaugural parade back in 64. But the band can't possibly be disappointed about its place this year. We have a real position of pride here for the parade. Right up front, ahead of Texas A&M's cavalry and band. I think the only significance is that the as far as March of the Longhorns goes, that we're not Aggies and we're not behind horses. <laughs> it is supposed to be a beautiful day here in Washington tomorrow. And uh, so the UT Brass is not going to get to use the antifreeze it brought along to put on the valves to keep their horns working. And the UT band director is not going to get to use his long johns he brought along. 
And as the UT band does play its historic song in front of the reviewing stand at the White House tomorrow, Brad, as the band marches off into the sunset, if you listen very closely, you'll hear the strains of the Yellow Rose of Texas. That's going to sound awfully nice. And uh, even though they won't be able to use the Long Johns or the uh, antifreeze for their valves, never let it be said that Texans don't come prepared for every contingency. Certainly. Thanks very much, Mike. <laughs> of course, all week long, we've been talking about the prominent role Texans, other than the president-elect, have been playing in Washington this week. Literally everywhere you look, you see the at all times and finally just wears them down any number of people have said that they got to the point they just pretended that they weren't there I in mean, the most positive way it has got to be quite suffocating yeah and and it's not the fault of the agencies are courteous men for the most part although there are women as well but their job is to protect the family and to protect uh, the president of the United States and the vice president and all the important members of his family as well and it's a kind of a thankless job they're not paid a lot of money they work around the clock they have to be outside on nasty days they have to stand and guard doorways and fire exits uh, when no one else is around and they have to be ever vigilant and if something goes wrong they're the first ones to be blamed for it it's a um, it's a branch of the Treasury Department as many of you know and uh, other Secret Service agents, when they're not in the protection of the UT band, the Longhorns, they'll put on a fairly good show, I would guess, coming up right after the Texas State Seal. They didn't bring Beehole with them, did they? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think so. Bob Hope keeping his coat on just to the side of the First Lady, and here comes the, uh, the show band from the University of Texas. UT do against uh, Oklahoma this year, you remember? Um, low scoring game, Oklahoma beat. Why did I remember that? I don't I, I said, you know, I said that with such conviction, and now as I look at you, I'm sure they beat them because Oklahoma um, actually only lost to uh, Nebraska right. and then the Orange Bowl again. Mrs. Bush is giving there at the University of Texas. Texas, then they remembered that George Bush was not born in Texas. So that, they wanted to do that. Yeah, that could cause a problem. Is that's that right. the one that's at the Air and Space Museum? Yeah, and they're going to give away for a uh, the door prize is a red pickup truck with a gun rack in the back. Uh, really? Yeah. By the way, that's the one we got Deborah and her. That's where she belongs. Into. Now this one is tomorrow night, actually, the Saturday night, oh, okay. the Texas uh, right. Black Tie and Boots Bowl. Someone has offered a round trip ticket to Paris, a first class ticket for one ticket. One. For one ticket to the Texas uh, Black Tie and Boots Bowl. We're told this is not a first in the inaugural parades for the. Um,